Eastern Pacific storms likely to form this week on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for June 27th. So no actual storms active anymore at this point. We've got the remnants of Cindy that are still traceable moving through the North Atlantic towards the Northwest. Unclassified right now, there are no major issues going on in the tropics, but there are a few areas of interest that are likely to develop in the next few days. First, the Atlantic, day 27 of hurricane season, and there's Cindy, uh, still over the open waters there, heading northwestwards. And uh, you can already see in the eastern Pacific there more action. Some of it uh, returning from some of Brett's energy entering the eastern Pacific right now. Uh, but the majority of that 60% is coming from the eastern Pacific already. And that 70% in front of it as well. Both of those systems could develop into tropical cyclones relatively soon. That 70% area is already starting to take shape. But it's a broad, large area of cloud at the moment. Western Pacific, we've given up on that area of interest that we had there. There's a bit of convection blowing up around the eastern part of the Luzon there, though. The Indian Ocean as well. Uh, a few areas of convection along the coast of the Bay of Bengal. But no areas of interest in either of those basins in the eastern hemisphere. So it's all in the western hemisphere at this point, uh, which is not too unusual, uh, but certainly interesting that the eastern hemisphere is having a little bit of a break. Satellite imagery right now looking at the last 24 hours and you'll notice that the Bay of Bengal, Ganges River Delta region getting a lot of rainfall over that time and the Philippines there as well getting a few uh, heavy bouts of rain over the mountains of Luzon predominantly. Elsewhere things looking fairly quiet you'll also note that eastern Pacific system there generating a lot of rain near its center or should I say near the highest areas of convection since it doesn't yet have a center of circulation here it is in front of us right now uh, a very broad area of just clouds spurting out towards the west and southwest there um, and eventually we should probably start to see clouds starting to form around the eastern side and eventually we'll start to see a center of circulation start to develop possibly early signs of that already actually as you look towards the northern side of that area very broad low pressure system and to the east what might be that second system they're forming as well uh, some of it from what's left of brett which is producing lots of uh, clouds there where i've circled along the coast there of um, honduras uh, and el salvador further east we've got of course the remnants of cindy which are quite easy to detect the center of what it would be there around about that location and still looking at a potential atlantic system forming later on as well uh, that's actually a 20 percent right now for some reason it wasn't marked and that could form to the northeast of the remnants of cindy there Sea surface temperatures are looking good in most parts of the eastern Pacific where it matters. Over 30 degrees Celsius where those two areas of interest are right now, possibly pushing close to 32 in one or two spots. In the Gulf of Mexico, things really starting to turn up the heat there as well and through the Gulf Stream out off the coast of the United States. Uh, but in the Atlantic in general, things are looking pretty good there, well above average, especially the further east you go, even though the actual temperatures are a little bit cooler. Western Pacific, a few hot spots as well, especially near the Philippines there, near Luzon, an area there pushing close to 32 degrees Celsius, but across the whole basin there, temperatures are looking good for sustained activity, obviously later on in the season. We're still early on here. Indian Ocean also looking good. It's the monsoon season now though, so we shouldn't be expecting any more tropical cyclones there until around late September at least, if not into October. And in the southwest Indian Ocean, uh, obviously we're not expecting much here for a while either. A few really cool spots now near Madagascar, below 26 degrees Celsius. And same story for Australia, some parts of uh, the southern part of Australia getting some really cold temperatures inland at the moment. And in the South Pacific, things looking calm and cool there as well. 
Here's the anomalies compared to average. The orange zones are above average, and the eastern Pacific has a pronounced area of that. The Atlantic, pretty much all around the tropical zone, is above average, but notable um, anomalies in the Gulf of Mexico and in the far eastern Atlantic. And the El Nino effect looks like it's getting more pronounced in the eastern East Pacific, uh, in the equatorial zone. Oceanic heat content is still looking pretty good for the Atlantic, especially in the Caribbean Sea and particularly further towards the west, towards the Yucatan Channel, the western tip of Cuba. Very decent values there. Eastern Pacific seems maybe it's just faltering a little bit, but the best area right now is in the Gulf of Tehuantepec uh, in the eastern part of Mexico and a little bit further towards the west. In the western Pacific, also along that alley approaching the Philippines looking very good. Short range GFS model then for the next five days. This is what it looks like in the Eastern Pacific with the development of these two systems there. And you can see them quite clearly there pronounced. Uh, the first system doesn't quite get away though. And the second system is starting to catch up by the time we get to the end of that five day period. If that does come to pass, that could shunt that second system, which is moving quicker than the first one, into or close to the coast of Mexico. So that's something to watch out for closely as we get towards that five day period. Over the next seven days this is the rainfall expectations that we're looking at and uh, in, in the early part of that model not much happens but later on when these systems start to form you'll see that big sweeping change there along the coast of Mexico further up the coastline indeed uh, where we could see those maximum rainfall amounts about halfway along the coast um, I think that's near Acapulco or Mazatlan uh, 13 inches there possible that is over 300 millimeters and out to sea much higher amounts but we uh, we obviously got to entertain that those could extend closer to land by the time these systems form so potentially maximums of 21 inches there out at sea that's over 500 millimeters possible so certainly extraordinary amounts but most of it is offshore into the longer range we're looking at the Atlantic for these two potential systems actually there's one there in the far south in the deep tropics that might develop out of a tropical wave and that second system that forms partially out of the remnants of Cindy but I think it's detached enough to be considered a separate storm entirely but first quick look at this uh, very low level low latitude system there that just runs right into, into South America and the second system of course maybe Cindy part 2 which could go on to affect Atlantic Canada big uncertainty about that one though that's a GFS it's been a little bit weak at the moment other models project something stronger look at what happens in the eastern Pacific I would say this is very unlikely that these two systems uh, catch up to each other and end up becoming one I think it's much more likely that the first system will just stay away and get repelled by the second one and just completely die off and the second one would stall a little bit south of Baja California and die off as well and then that potential third system there by the end of day 10 near the coast of Mexico too so the Eastern Pacific looks like it's on its way that's all the serious stuff done. You can scan the barcode and take a look at the Forster Team merch store where we have all of our usual items, including our full season individual storm animations, t-shirts that I can't fit into anymore, and our still waiting for Hone t-shirt as well, which is probably going to be the size of a pea by the time Hone forms. And this is the super long range then. Uh, can't really put much weight and investment into this, uh, but this is the Eastern Pacific during that time. A potential for maybe another system forming towards the end of that loop but it's quite hard to decipher anything really from that apart from at the beginning there that storm that's just moving inland but in general it's pretty quiet on the model front tonight uh, that is all we've got to show you actually uh, so we could be in for maybe a quieter period in the tropics with not so many systems to track after these two in the Pacific but things can change on a dime that's for sure you can talk about it live uh, in instant messages on discord discord.gg slash force 13 didn't know what I was saying then uh, but we've got 3,500 people there who are 
all eager about the weather and other things. Well, what happened on this day? It was Hurricane Audrey, which made a very powerful landfall category four along the coast of Louisiana, not far from the coast, not far from the border with Texas, uh, as a category four on June 27th, 1957. Even though it was such a long time ago, it is still one that sticks out, certainly as a big anomaly. Uh, I think it's one of the strongest June landfalls in the United States, if not the strongest. Hurricane Audrey, a Category 4, Virginia was also dying off near the coast of Japan. And uh, back to today, the next name on the Atlantic naming list is Don in the Eastern Pacific. We are still waiting for Adrian, but it feels like it's getting much closer now. And in the Central Pacific, certainly not getting any closer, it's Hone out there somewhere. Can you hear us? In the Western Pacific, the next name is Talim. And in the North Indian Ocean, it's going to be Tej. But like I said earlier, it might be a while until we see the North Indian start up again. Just a few more days until the Southwest Indian Ocean changes its naming list for the next season. But for now, the next name is Ghazani. In the Australian region, it's Jasper. And in the South Pacific, it's Lola. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.